Hey everyone, it's Oscar Beckler here, and I'm going to try and make a postmodern comic. Now, I don't know if it's really postmodern, uh, but what do I mean by that? <clears throat> um, I talked about this in class a little bit, but the idea of a postmodern comic, in my opinion, is that you take a lot of the um, writer's block and artist's block out of the equation by just sort of letting random chance choose your composition and your story and your art. So uh, here's like an example of a start. I asked on Twitter, you know, uh, just everyone give me a sentence. And here I got it. I got it. You know, uh, maybe it's not enough for a whole comic, but it's enough to get a start. So I've got some stuff here, and I can put that to use. I also grabbed some photo references. Uh, these were downloaded off of Flickr.com, and they're all just various public domain. Um, I searched but under Creative Commons. And you can see a sort of general flow here where I want to start with some sort of establishing shot over a city. So, you know, like, this is a cool skyscraper high-rise. Some sort of sinister man standing in this view watching over the city. And, you know, he's obviously got a suit. I don't know which of these people it'll be. Maybe it's multiple people. And then I want to also, you know, I think one of my goals here is to try and use as many varying styles as possible so that you see, like, there's a lot of, um, there's not as many rules as you think. So I want to, you know, also include some sort of cartoon character that is less serious and a little more cartoonish and web comic y. And uh, additionally, do something where I draw the entire thing like a fully rendered comic. So uh, let's start by looking at some of these resources that I used. I have a couple of things I grabbed for pre production, and this is something I just always think of when I do things. Pardon me, I just accidentally closed all these. So uh, step one for me a lot of times is gathering assets. And so here's some of the assets that I looked at um, and we're going to play with in this project. So the first one is I just wanted to make sure I had some extra brushes. And if you have the brush tool and you right click, you can click on the gear and choose get more brushes. This will take you to a website where you have to log into your Adobe account. But they have a couple of additional brush packs that are in like the default uh, Photoshop um, stable that I like. They've got like a manga brush pile. They've got uh, they have a crosshatch brush and they have a half tone brush and those all seemed really kind of uh, ideal for me. <clears throat> so uh, let's get started with some of these just setups. So I think like panel one is probably going to be like this ground shot then we're going to cut to the city above and then this and I think I want these to be very vertical panels followed by um, longer panels or followed by like character pose ones so I'm going to start by making my panels now there's two ways that uh, I tend to go about this one is to just use a single pixel layer I'm going to select the, mar uh, the rectangular marquee tool with M. Let me launch Karnak, by the way. Seeing as the fact that I use many, many hotkeys all the time, I like having Karnak handy. And I'm also going to start <clears throat> with some guides. So guides are something that are kind of handy because you can use them to just make sure your placement is right. So like, let's say you want to have a half inch border around everything. Uh, that's one way that you can do it. I'm going to start by using the rulers. So I hit Control R to bring the rulers up. You can also do this under View Rulers. I'm then going to right click in the ruler and change it to inches. If you're on a Mac, that's probably a Control click. But you right click and you change it to inches. And now you can get guides in your Photoshop document by pulling out from the rulers. So I'm going to do this. And I want this to be at exactly eight and a half inches. So if I hold shift, you'll notice that this starts to snap. So I can pull one there and pull one right here. I have to modify this a little bit. So half inch mark looks pretty good. I think if you zoom out, your snap will be even more aggressive. And easy to place. 
And that's just going to make it so that um, a lot of these things are a little neater. You can get really insane with your guides and start planning around like only having a certain, like a standardized amount for your gutters, which I think is kind of ridiculous. But I'm going to start with, uh, this is the stroke method that I like using. So I'm starting with a rectangular fill on the secondary layer. I'm just going to fill it with white. Oops, I filled it with black. I'll just invert it with control I. And I'm going to add a stroke as a layer style. So down here on the FX panel, I can click and add secondary effects. And I'm going to add a layer style. This is going to be inside of this. By the way, I can zoom in to see this a little better. And I want this to just be enough that I can see it. And if I hit control H, that'll hide the guides. You can also just go view clear guides if you want to get rid of them or go show and turn off guides but what I like about this method is it lets me be pretty destructive so like let's say I want to just have that starting city series of panels some sort of opening shot um, So I want these to all feel very cinematic, maybe very horizontal, like a series of uh, very horizontal quantities. I could even, if I really want, I could say maybe two and a half. Two and a half, four and a half, six and a half. And now I'm just going to make a selection. You'll notice that your selection marquee is now going to sticky to that. And I will use that marquee to just, on this layer that I made with the stroke, delete. And then I can also move that selection. I'm going to uh, move to the Selection marquee, and you'll notice that if I have the move select, uh, the move tool selected, it'll move whatever's in this selection. Currently, I deleted it, so there's nothing. If I have the marquee tool selected, I can actually stand inside of that and just move this. I can also hold Shift to constrain it to one axis, but usually the guides will do that for me. So I'm going to pull it down to around there and delete, and around there, delete. And then maybe some sort of two panel transition here. I could even, if I want, I could make it explicitly in the center here. Usually they have a lock. A lot of sensible guides just automatically happen. So you can see that it knows that in an eight and a half by 11 document, four and a quarter is going to be my center. So I could even then make sure I have like a half inch on that side and a half inch on that side. Very formal, very formal guide. The other thing I like to do sometimes is if I pull this over here. You know, you can add just a little bit of visual interest by making your panels slightly different sizes. So I'm going to use the marquee tool. So I deselected from my marquee so that I have just the amount necessary to delete from there. Now what I like about this method is that if I had a photo in here, such as this, uh, I could pull that out now so it's no longer in this group. And I could clip it to the image below. Oh, I want it to clip to this one. And now it won't 
be so problematic. And I can combine this with a mask. So I can further make this a little limited by uh, actually just making sure that it sticks to this panel. So I don't have to worry about that other stuff. So this is like method one of how I might go about this stuff, which is just using straight up uh, photo reference. So like maybe you do a Fumetti and it's entirely in comic or in photos. What if we wanted to uh, do something uh, a little more interesting? So first I'm going to really quick just get some of this stuff out. And the other thing I think I'm going to do really fast is I think I'm going to use some of this dialogue and just put it in somewhere. So, for our dialog boxes, I'm actually going to use uh, a secondary method. And you can use this for your panels too, which is just change to the rectangle tool using U. And you're going to want a white fill and a stroke that is black. And you can even match or slightly limit this based on your neighboring one, such as 5. And just like how this one is clipped, I could pull out something like this. And you'll notice that it now has some amount of flexibility in that I can just move it around. Uh, the other thing is I can transform this and because the stroke is added after the fact, It'll always stay the same size, even if I'm transforming it. And now I can start putting some text in. Can you believe a man who just works for a living? I think I want this to be a plot where, like, it's, you know, that opening movie stuff. You're looking over the city. And then as you get uh, that context, you then see up in the mad sky, in the skyscraper, the, you know, the evil scientist, rich man, whatever, is making some sort of robot or something, some sort of weapon of war that clearly will get out of hand and attack everyone. Now you'll notice that I can click in here and it'll automatically uh, constrain your type to this. Uh, I'm going to immediately change my color to black so that I can actually see this type. Now, we should actually talk about comic fonts. Um, I actually do think that the default should be um, all caps. So, I just think that's something that happens in comics and I like it. Uh, I'm actually going to keep all my text at uh, 10 point font and also you know it's controversial but you can also use Comic Sans and when it's in all caps it's not so bad guys come on I'm gonna hit I'm gonna view this at a hundred percent so that this is like actually letter sized and see if I can read it and that looks pretty good I think, yeah, I'm going to keep everything at 10 point, which means for the rectangle. Notice how I start moving this and it's conforming to every angle. I guess that technically doesn't matter because I could just move it up and it's clipped, right? Clipping masks make your life a lot easier. But that does a pretty good job. 
So there's step one, a photo maybe. And here's photo two for our next establishing shot. Now obviously I'm making my layers a freaking mess. Sometimes what I do, if uh, so I prefer having the move tool with auto select turned off. And then when I want to select something, I just hold control and click on it. So that way I can instantly find that layer and turn it off. And maybe I will end up splitting this middle panel into two panels. So I think, I don't know, one takeaway from this is that I'm trying to get my layout done as quickly as possible. I don't care about everything being perfect. I'm trying to make sure that uh, the important things are covered, which is just everything being in its place. like that and now I can go back to this panel I can actually make that into two panels here this one has a little bit of leftover so I control click on it which automatically selects it and now I can add a bit of personalized masking to it by the way if I want to modify where this is placed after the fact I can deselect the link on its mask and now I can sort of position this separate from the mask so it'll always be conformed to that but I can maybe go like that now a lot of comic book artists use photo reference for their art and I think it's totally fine to just place all this and then modify it after the fact once you have all this stuff in place. But let's go forward with a guy, maybe, an evil businessman. And talk about some other things that we could do. So if I have that establishing shot, maybe I can move these panels around a little more. Uh, maybe I'll do something where on this one, uh, and by the way, the other way you could do panels, just use the rectangular tool. So uh, what I would recommend is if you're doing the stroke, you can set it to the same size. So I'll set this to six as well. And I don't know, I like playing with extreme horizontals and extreme verticals. Since this one is not clipped, I'm going to move it up. I'll 
clip that and move it around. Now I wanted to grab this guy because I think it would be a fun opportunity to try out some of the other things you can do in Photoshop. Uh, obviously this is a smart object because I dragged and dropped it in and so it's a file somewhere in my downloads folder that is now something I can double activate. So I'm going to go over here and just to show you some of the cool things we can do in Photoshop while we're in this document. Let's just totally mess this guy up. Uh, one of the things that I think comes to mind is step one, how can we make this into things that we might want to use? And a quick tool for that is the threshold tool. Image, mode, or image adjustments, threshold. Now the threshold tool is going to turn everything into pure black or pure white. And so you can modify that and do something where you maybe get a silhouette right off the bat. You could also do something like, let me use control J, filter, oh wait, uh, image adjustment. I think I'm looking for gradient map. And so this is a gradient map that is now created grayscale value. And I am going to start control clicking and I'm going to get this really really close and make it a an exact 25 percent black now with that selected the next one I select is also going to be 25 percent black and in this gradient tool it's kind of tricky but what you have to do is like select the exact point and I'll put this at 20 uh, percent oops wrong Image adjustments, gradient map. So I'm going to put this one at 20%. I then create a new one by clicking anywhere in here. I can put its position immediately at 21%. Change its color to a 20% black. Click over here and set that to 40% so that that one's exactly there. Set this one to 40% black. We're getting brighter and brighter as we go. pretty sure there's a filter that does this but, but take this one and I'll just move this last one to 81 and you can get something like that You could also just play in the filters gallery. So a lot of these are stuff where you can get something very, very fast. Filter, filter gallery. And there's all sorts of ones that you can play with. Zoom way out. So just cut out. That's probably the one I wanted. And it's a way to just get like instant looks. You can usually use these to make something that looks terrible so don't overdo it um, I think the best ones tend to be paint daubs set to simple with no sharp sharpness and an increased brush size and also cut out and you can actually combine these so if I chose paint daubs I can add a second step here and for the second step do cut out with 
multiple levels. That's probably the thing to do. Is cut out and then desaturate. And you can change which order they happen in. All sorts of stuff like that. The last one, that's kind of cool. I think I'm going to select all, copy, create a new document, and paste this into the clipboard so that it's its own separate thing. Because this one I'm going to destroy using a different setup. I'm going to go to image, mode, and I'm first going to change this to grayscale. It's going to suck all the colored data out. Uh, share flatten, which will remove the background. Then I'm going to choose image, uh, a mode, bitmap. And when you change it to a bitmap, it's going to have pretty much only black and white data. And when we do this, we can end up choosing uh, how we create that black and white data as a screen tone. So I'm going to set this to 300 dpi. And you can see some of the options. We want half tone screen. And the frequency is going to create how um, how many of the dots you have per inch. So if you increase this to like 300, you're going to have a lot of noise. If you had it at something like 3, you'll see that you get something like that. Instant comic book, Bende dots. You can also start using this as color info. So what if I copy that? I'm going to go back over here. Actually, I'm going to go over here because this is my uh, what's it called my smart object of that. Obviously, now it's gigantic. So I'll scale it down to fit. And what are some cool things that I could do with this? Well, I can use this as like a baseline for some coloring options. So, uh, you know, and I'm just ripping here. Uh, but what if you wanted to select him as an object? I'm going to go back to um, him. And I'll use the picture to just make selections. Let's try object select. Let's try and just get his suit, for instance. That did a pretty good job. I can use option to deselect. Alt on a PC. So I can get rid of his hands. Man, I love object select. Maybe that. Something like this suit is really an ideal place for it. And obviously, don't assume that your first selection has to be correct. So I can go in and fix some of these last things like that. And there I've got a suit, right? Let's go back over here. I'm going to duplicate this layer. Let's control J. Oops. Actually, right click. Right click on the name. Duplicate layer. Oops, I do not want to inherit that selection. And now I'll apply this as a mask. So on this, I could now use on um, these Bende dots, image, adjustments, gradient map, and I can just basically select a color for my blue, or for my suit that's maybe blue. There's color number one. And over here for the lighter colors. Something like that. You could then go around doing that to all these. And you could even go back and uh, get different sizes of Bende dots. So, <coughs> or screen tone effects. So for instance, what if I take this image and I instead convert it to bitmap. 
at 300 ppi. Actually, let's leave it at 72 so that we can copy and paste it correct. And then for the frequency, yeah, let's stick with that. You can also change this to something like lines. Suddenly I have this guy with lines for his face. So again, using object select, I'm gonna try and just get his face and hands, his flesh tones, if you will. What's funny is like because this is gonna distort him pretty heavily, you'd be surprised at what I guess this is selecting on the wrong layer. There we go. That's better. Oh yeah, that's more flesh like. I think it was selecting based on the Ben Bay dot layer. So a lot of older comics like Rip Kirby and Mary Worth and stuff like that, uh, they would oftentimes take photos and uh, just figure out how can I use that as a baseline for quick, clean, beautiful ink. As for the hair, I'm not going to worry about that because I think that's a good place for comic book style inking maybe later. Let me go back up to this one and let's apply that as a mask. And image, uh, image adjustment, gradient map. Just give him a pink. Tones. I think all these gradients are going the wrong direction. Image adjustments. Gradient map. Instead of black, we're going to choose use our flesh color. This is like a shadow tone. And instead of white, you can choose a nice warm red. Now as for this last layer for his shirt and his cuff. Well, I know that if I have this and I add this to selection, by the way, I control click on a mask and it loads that as a selection. I control shift click on a mask and it adds that to selection. So that right now, you can see I have the background and this, his sleeves. And you know what? Let's just take this, add a mask, and invert that mask because I'm trying to get like just the pink of his shirt and his collar. I'll invert the mask and then I'm just going to fill anything that is not that stuff. So I 
invert this and I'll fill it with black. I'm going to fill it with black. Sometimes if I fill in the, the wrong color, I don't necessarily just undo, uh, invert it or refill it because a lot of times you can have problems along the anti-alias. So I want to make sure I get this filled correctly on the first time. And then <clears throat> let's just fill this with some sort of shirt color. some sort of sinister gradient behind him. That looks awful. Now at this point, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to right click and for my general brushes or my wet media brushes, I'm going to choose Kyle's inking thick and thin. Sure. And this brush is going to look like that, but we don't really have anything smooth when we use a mask. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my tablet and I'm just going to try and ink this as fast as possible. So a lot of times what you might do is black out the hair. All the stuff you need is right there in the photo. I'm just tracing it at this point. Uh, up my smoothing a little bit. Increasingly, do a lot of uh, uh, connect the dots drawing, where like I don't want to trust myself with some big long stroke that gets all the way down to the side of his arm. So maybe I'll just put one dot there, and I know I'll figure it out later. By the way, you can hold tilde now in Photoshop and paint in the opposite direction. So while I'm inking this, maybe I want to clean up that edge there. You can just hold tilde and switch to the eraser with this particular inking brush.
gonna call that close enough. Good enough for business work. And I'll merge all this down into one layer. Haha, -ha, it's very destructive. Flatten image. Now normally I might do something like save this as a separate Photoshop document and then bring that Photoshop document in as a smart image instead. But point is, it should. If I did it right. Oh no, wait, maybe it didn't. Now we're starting to get our sinister man. So what about something that is a little more cartoony? What if you want to do something that's more webcomic? Uh, well, let's do a panel like that. First I'm going to hide the guides. And I'm just going to do this entirely right here. Maybe this guy has some sort of sidekick who is a little more cartoony. I'm going to start by creating a panel. Sure, how about right there? It should have a white fill with black stroke and again this is using a shape layer which I would then use as um, my clipping mask for everything or I could do that over here on that original layer over here and instead just make a selection like this and fill with white black and now just paint inside that a little bigger so on this layer I'm going to create a big new group and way up here and start getting to work on this so maybe in this group I have a layer and I'm going to call this uh, roughs and a lot of times on a rough layer, paint with like a light blue pencil. Let's use a classic cartoonist brush. So this one tends to have pretty good flow. I'm going to put the smoothing in a little bit. And on this rust layer, I'm going to try and just I don't know, make some sort of science henchman. As a clipboard, I mean, he has a henchman, right? I'm holding tilde to erase. And it's the rough layer, so I don't have to worry too much about getting it perfect. Zipper, a little jumpsuit. Now I need to add an ink layer. Control Shift N, ink. I'm going to switch to black. And I'm going to start inking this guy, but a little more carefully. So a lot of times the first thing I care about is like this outer boundary. I like 
this idea of, you know, maybe I don't have to get everything in one. <coughs> maybe I can do tiny little strokes just until I get it right. And a lot of times what I'm doing here is I'm looking for closure of the edges because we're going to use that as a shorthand for the paint bucket tool once we get this in. Tilde to erase. And I think what's important is like, you know, like when I, when I used to do the paint bucket tool, I would get very, very antsy about making sure I had everything right. And like if I paint bucket filled and it didn't fill correctly, I would just like freak out. So just to show you. Like, I'm going to go like that, and it kind of filled it. Um, I think what I can do, I think there's a way to increase the spill on this. Maybe not. Too bad. Many programs have a paint bucket that gives you a little bit of spill after uh, the fact. Oh well. Thanks for nothing, Photoshop. You know, I think what I might do for page two on this is just like, you know, if this is like a mad scientist in a city or a biz, big evil corporate businessman in a city, like planning his little domination from a skyscraper with his minion, uh, and all their talk is leading up to their brilliant masterpiece, maybe just have the second panel be uh, a big splash with one really nice image. And for that, I'll do something more traditionally cartoony. So I'm doing, I'm doing this wrong. I'm going in and I'm being a little too loose. It's one of the things that I really struggle with, which is uh, when you're doing rough drafts, you need to be like fast and loose and you have to make a mess and you have to be comfortable with that. And then once you switch to inking, you have to be a little more careful. So like, that's an example. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I get this little overlap and it takes a minute to like, it's like highway deceleration. You just have to take a minute to figure out how you're going to how you're going to switch gears to something that's a little more calm and measured and making sure that your ink is correct. I have about 10 minutes to finish this and then I'm off to school. That line sucks.
Here it's cardboard. And tilde lets me just erase really fast with this. I think one of the things that I also really fail to do with Wacom tablets enough is when you're on a tablet, you have a lot of pressure sensitivity. And I just never use it. I like pushing as hard as possible anyways. And uh, I need to be better about having a fluttery, tuck, uh, a fluttery touch that doesn't mess that stuff up. I mean, this idea of like postmodernism in your comics, it's just like a art thing that I'm really on a big kick about right now. Uh, I've been reading this book, um, The Way of Painting, which is about a translation of um, the Mustard Seed Garden, which is an old Chinese painting manual. <clears throat> and it's got a lot of like historical stuff beforehand about like, um, you know, Taoism and Confucianism. And um, it's funny because, like, uh, it talks about how a lot of these guys used numerology pretty heavily. Like, they would look up specific pa passages in uh, the Tao Te Ching and use that to figure out the correct way of living their life. And it's funny because, like, in Europe, people do the same thing uh, back in the day. Like, What's his name? Isaac Newton uh, was obsessed with like various like Bible chapters as like specific numbers, and you know the number five is really important in this Chinese thought, and I'm really enjoying it as something of like just a jumping off point. Like I don't believe in numerology, but why not just stick a five on there and it'll evolve into something. It's almost like uh, trying to like unlock your brain power for the starting point like you know maybe the idea isn't so important maybe it just has to get to the next page and it's fine um, so let's say I have a guy like this now I can start filling this and having a little more detail so I'm going to create a layer below it I'm going to rename this by the way on windows so I'll name this color and I might start with just a big flat and I'm going to use various goblin colors. I'm going to turn off this and a lot of times what I'll do is on this layer which is below I'm going to try and fill it with green and obviously there's some sort of hole that's not catching here. So I'll just switch to the brush tool and start my paint off by covering up where I think the holes are until it works. So there's some blue. Let's reference this. Secondary blue over here. Try that. So like, you know, I'm on the color layer. I don't have a perfect uh, silhouette, but you know, maybe I don't want that on every chunk of ink. And a lot of times, like, I remember early, like, early on when I was learning how to do this stuff in Photoshop, I would, like, be way too aggressive about that. And, um, it would just take up too much time. right and then any sort of like little holes or spill areas I can just fill in with the brush tool so this is giving me a starting color layer right I'm gonna switch back to this color 
this gradient tool. Let's see if we get that hand correct. Hey, it worked. Let's choose a darker, darker blue for his shoes. Also, there's nothing wrong with just, if you can't figure out that paint bucket tool, actually I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on his shoes. Why not just paint it? Big brush to small brush. Hold, uh, hold tilde for erase. And I'll just erase back into my ink. So obviously there's a little bit more work to do on this, but basically the next stage is a lot of flats that use this color layer to oops, use this color layer to just do things like paint in shadows now. So I actually might, instead of that, I might make this a full color, a solid color layer. And I'll just call it like that. I'm gonna invert the mask so that nothing is here. I'm gonna clip it by holding option and clicking between the two layers and now I will paint on this clipping mask with white to bring in some shadows. I'm also going to change this mode on this layer to multiply so that anything I draw in here is going to be darker than before. And then I can start figuring out like some sort of shadow path. And then in post, I can just double click this and lighten it. So that it's just a subtle effect, right? And then back on the mask. Now what's cool is like, use this as a starting point for this. There's a little more digital painting that we can do from here, but uh, for now, this is uh, you know it's a good start to a number of comic book styles that you can use. Just straight up photos, photos as an inspiration that you trace over and uh, do a bunch of post process on. And next up, I gotta add more text also. But I hope this gets you some ideas to start off with, and we'll continue from there.